in this video a schematic of a very bare amplifier. As bare as you can get it. And uh, <coughs> the first advice is, at the moment at least, don't make this circuit. It's experimental. And I had, have already paid some attention uh, to that amplifier in an earlier video where I was talking about the development of, say, a 50 or 60 watt amplifier that had to work on 90 volts or so. 100 volt perhaps. But of course, when you want to develop that, uh, the best idea is to make a test circuit that at first works on a lower supply voltage. So, this is the schematic at the moment. I have already given some first ideas in the earlier video. You see a bunch of diodes hanging. I will tell more about that. Problems when uh, making this amplifier were that um, the <coughs> transistors and transistors, when they were driven, only one transistor worked, got warm, the other one uh, was um, not working. That's one conclusion that you can take when you uh, make such an amplifier with a complementary end stage. When one transistor in the end stage is hot and the other one is cool, you are more or less sure that your uh, sine wave that you send in or audio whatever is not properly amplified and the strange thing is in all these cases that even when uh, the complementary end stage and transistors don't work properly you can hear a good sound at the output that means in fact that only half of the circuit works but uh, when it's made in the way that uh, is done here, uh, it could give out, say, 5 watt audio or so. The sound is good, but the amplifier, in fact, doesn't work. And this is the schematic of this amplifier. Uh, again, it's experimental. Don't make it. Uh, of course, you can make it. No problem with that. It works at approximately 15 watt audio. But uh, when you want to uh, give it a good sound, uh, it you will surely heat up a lot of aluminum. That means uh, that a constant current is flowing here in the circuit. Both um, heat sinks uh, heat up very much. And there is no relation between, say, the level of the input signal, that's here, here is the first transistor, here is the level, here I can set the level of the um, first transistor, audio input level, and there's no relation between that audio input level and the current flowing here in the end transistors. That means that it is class A. And I want to demonstrate that uh, and how critical that all is. So this is in fact a um, amplifier that in fact can be used as a class A amplifier but also as a class B amplifier. So in class A a, con a constant current starts to flow here, flows through the uh, the loudspeaker, you hear a sound, the sound is good, etc, etc. And in class B, and that's what I want to demonstrate, the circuit gets very, very critical. Um, it has more or less and always, uh, when you study these circuits on the World Wide Web or in books or whatever, and when you see this kind of circuit, it has always a lot to do with the voltage drop between the two bases of the uh, driver transistors. 
So here is these four diodes in a row give a certain voltage drop, each approximately 0.7 volt or 0.8 volt, so approximately, say approximately 4 volts. But when you uh, shortcut one of them, the voltage drop between the two bases of the driver transistors get, gets l somewhat lower, only uh, approximately 0.7 volts lower, but it has an enormous effect on the end current, on the current flowing through the <coughs> end transistors. And I will demonstrate that. Pen over first for all the pin connections. This is it, it is an experimental circuit anyway. So let's listen, try, etc. etc. Uh, here is my MP3 player. Put in the card now. And of course, lift up the voltage. Uh, this circuit was made for approximately 30 volts. can say that this amplifier works good, but uh, now there's no relation between the input level here, I can set that with the potentiometer, and the current to the transistors, and transistors. That means that they get very warm. Uh, well, there's a risk of thermal runaway in such a case. Uh, anyway, and uh, to prevent the risk of thermal runaway, I have to say that I did not test it. Uh, sometimes you see that the diodes here, that do the voltage drop, are, uh, say, connected to the uh, heatsink of the end transistors. I uh, do not test that at the moment. I have not tested it at the moment. But anyway, um, Perhaps when you want to make this circuit in an experimental way and you like to do experiments, audio experiments, it could be a good idea. So again, uh, we go to 30 volts. <laughs> So the, the, the circuit surely doesn't work bad, but uh, the most important thing is this, that there's uh, that the current So at 27 volts it takes approximately 1.2 ampere. Uh, that, that means that we have a heat dissipation here in the end transistors uh, of approximately, say, 20 watt or so. So they heat up. And what I wanted to demonstrate is what happens when we um, shortcut one of these diodes here in a row. And that means that the circuit suddenly works as a class B amplifier where the, there's a relation between the input level, audio input level, and the current through the end transistors. Anyway, let's try. <laughs> What I was doing now is shortcut 
one of the diodes in a row. Uh, that means that the voltage drop between the two bases of the driver transistor <coughs> changes. That means that uh, the current through the end transistors also changes very, very substantially. And you could surely hear that there was audio distortion. So that had, had everything to do with only, say, shutting out this diode in the row here, this one. Suddenly uh, there is no, uh, no longer a fierce current flowing uh, through the end transistors and into the loudspeaker, of course. Uh, and that means uh, that the circuit uh, more or less the end transistors are more or less pinched off and there is now a relation between the input level and the current. I want to demonstrate that. So now I go to the, I put the input potentiometer, the audio level input potentiometer to its lowest value. There's no current flowing. The voltage is 40 volts. We have of course to do with Ohm's, with Ohm's law, 40 volts, no current flowing. And now I lift up the, the input level, audio input level. Well, the, the input level is now not uh, very high because the music... Well, put in the card again to get uh, a better demo. So per perhaps it's visible, but you can see that the, the amperimeter moves a little bit related to the audio input level. And of course when the transistors get, get more warm, get hotter, and that will be, of course, with this low current flowing, uh, that will can take some time, the quiescent current will also be higher. So this is in fact a class B amplifier without a proper um, quiescent current. So, um, and you see in many cases in, in uh, these kinds of old school 1970s, 1980s audio amplifier, this circuit that can do that job can give instead, say, um, not instead, but there are a few diodes here and one of these diodes is made in this way. And that can, uh, with that you can um, set the voltage drop between the two driver transistors to a very critical level, level where there's no, there's no audio distortion and the, uh, there's a direct and good relation between the audio input level and the current in the end transistor so that you have a pure sound and perhaps I'm going to use this uh, solution. So this here acting as a kind of variable silicon diode with which you can set the voltage drop between say 0 0.5 and perhaps 0 0.8 volt. So one, one of these diodes uh, can be used in that way. Anyway, this is hum, of course. So, uh, 